I want to see this. Shoulder! Arse! Time for what? Forward! March! The Civil War was the most traumatic event in American history, which is why these reenactments are like collective therapy. Are your men loaded? Steady, boys. A way to work through the trauma of the past. Steady, boys. In the hope it will never be repeated. But with the divisions in today's America now so deep, some fear the reenactment has outlived its day. We want brave Georgia! That the political divide is almost beyond repair and that violence may once again be the inevitable outcome. One in five Americans think violence might be necessary to get the country back. Whoa, one in five Americans? 79% of Americans, I don't know where they get these stats from, but like 20% strongly agree. You know, 79% strongly disagree. So interesting. Back on track. I worry about civil war. Civil war, they want civil war. The number of people who agree force is justified to restore Trump to the presidency, 18 million. <laughs> The culture wars have been boiling up for decades. Abortion, racial injustice, and guns. But many Americans feel something about this moment. America has always been divided, but none more so than now, when both parties feel the other side winning the election is the end of democracy itself, when the rhetoric has become increasingly violent and the rage visceral. Then throw into that the fact that there are more guns in this country than there are people, and the result is a powder keg just waiting to go off. I want to really see something that's... First of all, why is there a British lady commentating on American politics. Seriously, I don't think so. I don't I don't believe it. It's it's it smells to me. And that's what happened on July the 13th. It's when a 20 year old man attempted to shoot and kill Donald Trump using an AR-15 style rifle as he was on stage speaking during a rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. The former president escaped bloodied but unscathed raising his fist into the air and mouthing, fight, fight. A defiant gesture that's already become a rallying cry for the MAGA faithful. Fight, fight, fight. And spread fear among everyone else. A little more <laughs> fearful about... What's going on in your so world, Dexter? ...about my opinions. Mary Roniak lives not far from the site of the shooting. She says the attack on Trump has crystallized her belief that the toxic combination of guns and anger is much more likely to spill over into violence. The fact that we're having an attack on a political candidate, it's very disturbing, it's very frightening. The ready access to guns and people have- Oh, the access to guns? Shut the fuck up. Seriously, you gotta be kidding me. Look at her face, dude. She looks like such a depressed Karen that never gets any D. I swear to God. Literally, I just I just don't I think there's like certain people who should comment and certain people who shouldn't. I mean, like, look, when it comes down to it, these people are going to run inside their houses and hide with their tails tucked in their legs. They're not going to be patriots like they're not going to take up arms. Hypothetically, if there was some kind of skirmish, these are the types of people you can expect to not fight. These are the ones that, that will be that will be eliminated. Such strong emotions on both sides of the fence. You don't know what's going to happen. And the access to guns is obviously all pervasive at a time when the politics is heating up and probably as angry as it's ever been. I'm so scared of guns. It's fucking idiots. As divided as it's ever been? Yes. People who show interest in politics can be afraid of being targeted. Mary prays for an America with fewer guns. That's, that's the problem. When you live in fear like that, that's the type of sheeple that, that like big corporation America is trying to create. It's these people that are always consuming, always afraid. You don't want to end up like these people. Guns. But so many others in this country believe that more arms is the only option. The next four years are going to be a show no matter who wins or loses because both sides are going to feel cheated. Both sides are going to feel like this country is going to go to hell. And the worst part is there's more than one side. There's more than two sides, right? This is a dog and pony show that's been going on forever. Like two sides? There's not two sides, man. 
There's just these two like fake appointed, you know, Democrat Republican side. But everyone's a combination or a culmination of a lot of different ideas that don't represent aren't represented fully represented by each side. You can't look at this stuff. You can't look at politics like in black and white. You just can't. It doesn't work that way. They want it to work that way so they can divide us. That's why they do it. That's why it was created for division. No matter who wins. Steve Clark's family has been running this gun store in Virginia since the 60s. Shooters, eyes and ears, firing line is now hot. You may handle your weapons at this time. He says the gap between those on the right, like him, and those on the left is now so vast, it's almost impossible to find common ground. If they can't make me understand them, and I can't make them understand me, <laughs> yeah, I need them. I need to make them understand me. I need to force them to understand me. <laughs> What's up, Diva? <laughs> I need to force them. <laughs> Bro, some of these people, like, I don't, I just don't know, man. Like, I, I'm just so, like, it's just so weird for me to see people that shouldn't have guns, like, and they have guns. But also, like, think of, like, where we stem from. Like, Washington was here, you know, like, the first president, Washington, like he he came here and he was a he was a general and he led all these people, this ragtag band of people, to like drive out the British. He drove he drove out the British with the help of uh with the help of his crew, you know? With Adams and and uh and, and Franklin and all them. So he's I mean I just I, I, I we've come so we've come so seemingly so far in in, in the timeline, but like really we haven't really advanced much when it comes to, to politics, and it's because they want to keep the power. But where does that go? Ugly. What does ugly mean? How do a, you it could be a war. What's best for everyone is that it, there's no turmoil, right? That's like how everyone keeps in control. I, I honestly, I'm afraid that this could be a war. Because if you start if you start having these wars here on on this land, then we become vulnerable to the outside, and it gives our it gives all of our, you know, if we're doing trade, it, it breaks those lines down because no one knows who's in charge of the, the United States. So if hypothetically, if we're supplying X, Y, Z type of element or um, outsourced product to uh, China, and then all of a sudden the leadership changes and decides we need that here, then China's going to, it's going to affect our relationship with China. And then boom, we have potentially another war on a different front, not just in here in our country. So it's, it sucks that, like, when you think of civil war, it may be necessary in some cases, but, like, we should be advanced. I mean, we're only, we're a young nation, right? We're, like, 300 plus years old. So, like, we should, but we should have our shit together, and we just don't. We just don't. And I think most of it is because, and I just correct me if I'm wrong, whatever, all the systems that have been put in play for us have been manufactured for them to take more money from us. Like, literally, the first tax that we've ever had was the whis whiskey tax. And what happened? They they stormed. This was after Washington already won. This is, like, on his second or third year in, into his presidency, which he didn't want, by the way. He was forced into it. And they, the general had to come, up, come about, and he had to, like, talk to the other 6,000 soldiers because they rallied 12,000 soldiers. There had 6,000 soldiers that were that were protesting this tax and they were like, we're not going to do it. And you have to think Boston Tea Party happened before this. So they're already ready to go. And they've been fighting 12 years, 12 years prior to this. So the militias are set. They know what they're doing. So I don't know. Like, I, I just, I just, I really hope that we can get our shit together and figure out a way to, to make it happen. At the University of Early Virginia, morning here, just took the dogs out. Like that, nice. That even has Welcome to the stream. On edge. Um, Caroline I'll be Janney playing in a second. professor of the Civil War and says she sees parallels between then and now. There's certainly similarities in the rhetoric that's being used. I think lawmakers in, in 1860 didn't really believe that white Southerners would reject the results of an election. And when they did, that's how we ended up in a civil war. And do you see parallels as an election looms in November with the tension that is alive in America today? Yes, in that I fear that Americans take democracy for granted and we assume that elections are going 
to go smoothly and that, that people will accept them. But why have we got to this? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I feel like this is leaning towards saying if we get Trump, there'll be a civil war. I think that's what we're leaning toward with this. This uh, and it, It's just kind of like, it's just funny. You can kind of feel it. You know what I mean? Like, ooh, potentially this is scary. It's a point where people like you are being interviewed by people like me talking about parallels with the Civil War. Well, that's what's incredibly frightening to me. We are you could draw so many parallels with any war. Literally, like, the wars start all the, basically the same, the same kind of way. There's a conflict between two different people of, or two different groups of people, or three different groups of people that have different beliefs about spending money this way, this way, or that way. And then you have leaders who are doing X, Y, and Z. You can literally draw parallels. Like, sometimes I feel like these historians think that they're a lot smarter than they are, period. Not there yet. But we need to be on guard. Company command! We have to be on guard. And then they cut to the Civil War loading muskets. <laughs> no one's talking about a full-scale Civil War. Left! But a rise in political violence and civil unrest is what has Americans, even these reenactors, on edge. We've seen quite a decline in people's behavior and civility. The divisions then much more deeply ingrained in the culture. We're not there at that point yet. I don't think we'll get to that point, hopefully. <laughs> and in the wake of an assassination attempt on a president, I love how they have like Dixie flags. <laughs> like we got to, like they don't give a fuck in the South, man. They don't give a fuck. They're like, yeah, we got to make it realistic. They're not adding black people into the regiment. There's not one black person in the regiment, dude. This is truly artwork. Okay, this is art at its finest. <laughs> But in the wake of an assassination attempt on a presidential candidate and with an election looming in November, hope is something everyone's clinging to. 